Parker. This is Mrs. Lamorne, and today we'll be doing Unit 2, Lesson 9, Relate Area to Multiplication. Our goal today is to explore the area of rectangles with one side length that is a unit fraction. We're going to begin with our warm-up. Here we are. Of course, we're going to do a what doesn't belong. Which one doesn't belong? We can pick any one that doesn't belong. Remember in class, there's always a reason for each one that does not belong. So let's begin with A. When I look at A, the first thing that comes to mind is that there aren't any divisions in that one, right? There isn't any divisions. There are, there are no grids. There are no squares. So I'm going to say no grid lines. No squares. When I look at B, I notice that everyone else has numbers on every side of them except for B, right? Those numbers are not lab labeled. So I'm going to say that there are no labels. No labels or no numbers next to each one, right? I also notice that it is the tallest, and it's taller than it is wide. And that would be for B. When I look at C, well, of course, it's not a rectangle. It's the only one that's not a rectangle, right? It is a triangle. So I could pick that one. That one stands out. When I look at D, um, it's not all shaded. Not all shaded, right? Only part of the squares are shaded. Only part. Looks like half of each one. All right, so I could pick a reason to pick any one of those that did not belong. All right. Okay, now I have some figures there. What is the same about all of these rectangles and what is different? What is the same and what are the different? Well, same. First thing I notice with, with them is that they are all shaded. So I'll put same up here. They're all shaded, aren't they? They're all divided into six. Divided by six groups or six things. Can barely read that. Okay. Um, let's see. What else is the same about that one? Well, let's start talking about what's different then. I'll put different over here. What's different is the shading is different. There's a different amount of shading in each rectangle. Different amounts of shading. Amounts of shading. Right? different size. They have, they also have different widths, right? This is one, one half, one third, and one fourth. So those are th some things that I noticed. We're going to figure out how, we're going to figure out how much of each rectangle is shaded. We call this finding the area of the shaded region. Finding the area of the shaded region. Okay. What are some strategies we could use to find the area of each of the shaded regions? So let's talk about that on the next slide. What are some strategies? What could we do to find the area of the shaded region? Think about that. I think that for some of them, we could count. So like number one. One. Oops. Sorry about that. Let's go back. There we go. Let's find these areas, please. There we go. One, two, three, four, five, six. And they're all shaded, so what I would think that this is six square units. I don't know what kind of units. So I'm going to put units. When I look at this one, a strategy that I could use is I could count, right? I could say one half plus one half plus one half plus one half. How many times? Six times. 
All right. And then I could just count. One, two, three, four, five, six halves. Or I could say this makes a one, this makes a one, and this makes a one. So six halves is the same as three. The other way I could look at it is I could take this piece and move it over here, right? So this is no longer here, and this makes a what? A one. It's all shaded in now. Then I could do that over here too, right? I could move this to this piece here, and then that's all shaded in. This is no longer here, and that's a one as well. And then I could do that with the last one and shade it all in. And then how many full things have I shaded in? I've shaded in three square units. So I could do that two different ways. I could add up the fractions, yeah, and combine them to make holes, or I could move the pieces so that they made a hole. So I'm going to use that same strategy over here, but this time I'm going to have to fill in two. One, two. So that means I'm going to have to take these out, right? So I move this one here and this one here, and that makes a one. I could do the same thing over here, move this piece here and this piece here and shade it in, and that makes a two. The other way I could think about that is that I have one, two, three, four, five, six, one-thirds. And what have we learned about that? Six over one times one times three, six times one, and I know that that's going to equal two, right? Because I actually drew it out, one, two. But I also know that six divided by three equals two. So there's lots of ways I can think about that. I can do the same thing here, right? I have six one-fourths. Six one-fourths. Six times one is six. One times four is four, right? When I think about this as division, I know that four doesn't go into six evenly. So maybe if I made holes over here, it might help me to think about how I could write that as a whole number and a fraction. Because because it's in proper, I know that I'm going to get a whole number and a fraction. So again, I could move this piece here, this piece here, and this piece here. And that means these three go away, and this fills in. And that makes a one. And then I'm left with two little pieces left, right? One-fourth and one-fourth. I could move that here, and then I notice that this is a half. So 6 divided by 4 is the same as 1 and a half. So this would be 2 square units, and this would be 1 and a half square units. And I showed that in several different ways, right? I could move pieces around. I could use multiplication. I could use repeated addition. So this would be the same as 6 times 1 half. All right. Lots of different ways to think about how to find the area of shaded regions or how to multiply a unit fraction times a whole number. Lots and lots of different ways to look at that. So let's talk about that a little bit more. What is the same about the strategies and what is different? Well, they all counted the number of shaded parts, but they counted them in different ways. Some people multiplied, and some people moved parts to make whole squares. How does the expression 6 times 1 fourth also represent the shaded area in square units? Well, there are six par shaded parts. 1, 2, oops, 3, 4, 5, 6, and they're each 1 fourth. How does the expression, how does the expression one fourth times six also represent it? Well, there is a rectangle whose area is six. Here's the area of six. And one fourth of the rectangle is shaded. One fourth of the rectangle is shaded. So when we're thinking about it that way, here's the rectangle, right? One fourth of it 
two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. So this would be three fourths, not shaded, and one fourth shaded. All right, some different ways to think about unit fractions. Okay, now your teacher is going to give you some grid paper. And on the grid paper, we're going to represent half unit by one unit, a half a unit by two units, a half unit by three units, and a half unit by four units. Then we're going to find the area of each rectangle that we drew. What information do you need to find the area of the shaded region? So let's do one and two first, and then we'll come back to the slideshow. So I'm going to escape and go to my overhead projector. Okay, so the first one that I had to do was one half by one unit. So that means, there we go. Here's my one, there's my one, and then I'm going to take a half of that. So there's my one half by one. The second one I had to do was one half by two units. So that means I have to go over two, right? Over two, and then I'm going to take half by two units. So one half by two would mean this. So there's my two, one, two, and I'm going to cut it in half, one half of two. And one half of two, one half and one half. Okay? And again, we have to find the area of those, right? So let's go ahead and this is one, this is my two, and then I cut them in half. The next one I have to do is one half by three. So one, two, three, there's my three, there's my three, draw my square, and I'm going to take one half of that. So I'm going to go all the way across right there. And then I'm going to do four. One, two, three, four. There's my four, and I'm going to cut those in half. There's my one half by four. So here's my four, my three, my two, and my one. So one half by one, we had to find the area, would be one half. One half is, is done, right? One half square units. For this one, I could move this half over here, and that makes a one square unit. The other way I could think about it is to say two times one half. That would give me two over two and I know anything over itself is going to equal 1. And then this one, remember I can cut this out and move it over here. So that makes 1. And then what am I left with? A half. So we could say that 3 times 1 half is 1 and a half. Or 3 halves square units. Can't forget that part, right? Okay, here we have our last one. I can cut this piece off and move it here. Cut this piece off and move it here. That gives me one, two. So four times one half is four over two, or two holes, two square units. Okay, so we were able to draw one times one half, two times a half, three times a half, and four times a half. And I was able to write an, an expression or an equation for each one of those. Okay, let's see what our next task is. Okay, so I drew those. I found the area of each one. Now it's asking me, what information do you need to find the area of the shaded region? Well, the shaded region is covered up by this orange square, isn't it? So I'm going to need, there's some missing information there. So what am I going to need to find that information? I would need to know how many units, how many units are under here. I can estimate, but I'm not going to know for real, right? So I need to know how many squares are under here, and I'm going to assume that they are shaded. This top part is shaded. What might the area of the shaded region be? Again, I'm going to just have to guess. 
So if this is one, so I guess this is one. I don't know. One, two, three. There might be one, and then I would have to move this here and this here. I would say that there might be three, but that is just a guesstimate, right? Because I can see that four half square units, which I could put together to make two square units, and then there are some more that I can't see. I think it might be more than two. Um, it might be three. I think it might be three. But again, we're guesstimating. Okay. What do you need to know to determine? We just talked about that. We need to know how many rectangles or how much is underneath the orange. How many square units do you think might make up the rectangle? We decided three. How do you see, how do you use the number of these unit squares to make an estimate for the shaded region? Well, I kind of just drew it in, right? I kind of guessed because there's part missing here. There's extra here and extra here. So I just kind of guessed at that. All right. Today we learned all about relating um, whole numbers and fractions. What strategies do we use to find the area of rectangles with two whole numbers? We can count the number of squares and we can multiply or we can multiply the side lengths, right? So we could count one, two, three, four, five, six, or we could say six times one. What strategies did we use today to find the area of rectangles with a whole number and a side length of a unit fraction? We counted the unit squares and multiplied by the size of the shaded region. So if it were half, we multiplied by a half. But we also could move those so that we could see. How are the strategies we use to find area of rectangles with whole number and side lengths the same as and different from the strategies we use to find area of rectangles with whole number side lengths and fractional side lengths? So we, would, we could multiply and we could count. That's how they're the same, right? We can multiply one times six, or if this was a half, we can multiply six times a half. Or we could move those fractions and count them, move those fractional parts and count them. So when, when they're whole numbers, we can just count. But when they're fractional parts, we move them and then count. We move them to make holes, and then we can count. All right. So here's our cool down. Find the area of the shaded region, explain or show your reasoning. So let's use both strategies. The first strategy I'm going to use is to move the fractional parts and make a hole. So I'm going to do that. So I'm going to move these three to fill in these three. One, two, three. So I've moved that one, that one, and that one, and now I have one hole. So I know that this is a one. And then I'm left with one fourth, right? One out of one, two, three, four, one fourth. But the other thing I could have done was I could have multiplied five over one times one over four gives me five fourths. And five fourths is the same as one and one fourth. And remember, we have to write square units. So I could have done either way. And I can prove that this is one and one fourth by saying four goes into five one time. One times four, right, is four. We subtract those and I get one left over. And I know my leftover is going to always go over my denominator. All right. That's it for lesson nine. See you next time.